This is utterly embarrassing. The Boston Celtics, who have the best record in the NBA, took on the Los Angeles Lakers without their two superstars and LeBron James and Anthony Davis. And this team, being at the where they are in the standings and amid their trade rumors, came out and had a stellar performance versus the Boston Celtics, who unfortunately were utterly embarrassed on their home court tonight with a classical date defense, not as being great on the three-point percentage compared to the Los Angeles Lakers, who are one of the worst three-point machine three-point shooting teams in the league compared to the Boston Celtics, who are one of the best. We'll be breaking down what happened in tonight's loss on this episode of Celtics Digest. I'm Bruce Velez. But before we dive into that Boston Celtics content, 78% of our viewers are not subscribed, and we'd greatly appreciate it if you guys hit that subscribe button and join the Celtics Digest family. We upload daily Boston Celtics content and coverage, so if you want to make sure you stay up to date on all that daily content and coverage, hit that subscribe button as you definitely will not regret it. But let's dive in to this analysis of this game as the Celtics suffer a devastating loss tonight. And the Boston Celtics just did not have it going from the start get-go. The Celtics not shooting the greatest tonight offensively. At the end of the first half, Jason Tatum was the only starter in double digits. And the Boston Celtics had one of their worst shooting nights as a starting five this season. This is utterly embarrassing as the Celtics go up against a team in the Lakers with no LeBron James and no Anthony Davis, and this team had been experiencing a lot of blowouts on their side with their superstars playing. So you would expect with those guys out, the best, one of the best teams on offense and one of the best teams at home would come out and utterly destroy a team like the Los Angeles Lakers, and it unfortunately did not happen for this team. Massive turnovers for the Celtics as well helped this Los Angeles Lakers team fight through in this game. And the Lakers, who I believe were ranked 28th in three-point shooting heading into this game, shot phenomenal compared to the Boston Celtics. Even though the Celtics had better field goal percentage than the Los Angeles Lakers, the Lakers hitting more threes and getting more free throws got them this victory. Let's dive in looking at the stats. As you guys can see, the Celtics shooting better field goal for percentage. But if you want to look at that three-point percentage, the Lakers shooting 53% to the Celtics 33%, which is not great. Celtics did shoot 100% from free throw, which is good. But look at those free throw numbers, 26 to 7 free throws. That is a big difference right there. We want to look at a bunch of the other stats that really aren't important. The Lakers got more steals than the Boston Celtics. The Celtics did get more blocks protecting the rim and more points in the paint. But the Lakers ultimately got the job done versus the Boston Celtics tonight. Let's look at the stats and want to talk about some of these players. Jason Tatum, one of the only players in the Celtics starting lineup to score 20 points. Not the greatest shooting night. 8 for 21 from the field, 5 for 10 from 3. But 7 total rebounds, 3 assists, 1 steal, 1 turnover, with two, one block with 2 turtle turnovers. Kristaps Porzingis was all right. Again, struggled from 3-point percentage. 1 from 7 hasn't been the greatest. But 7 for 15 from the field, 2 for 2 from free, with 7 rebounds and 5 blocks was absolutely a... Phenomenal paint beast for the Boston Celtics with 17 points. He was scoring on his post-ups as well. Derek White and Jalen Brown, unfortunately, did not have great shooting nights. Derek White, not making the All-Star game tonight, did not have anything to prove to get his All-Star game, you know, for those some guys that are injured gain back up because he did not have a great performance, only 9 points. And Jalen Brown, named that All-Star reserve starter, did not have a great performance either, finishing with 8 points. Pretty solid defense, but again, 0 for 3 from 3. Not his strong suit, but that is not great for him. 4 for 12. And if we want to look at these turnovers from the Boston Celtics in that starting lineup, if you guys can see, two from Tatum, three from Porzingis, four from Holiday, two from White, and three from Brown. That is not what you want to see out of your starting five, especially when you look at the bench and out of everyone that played, there was only one from Peyton Pritchard. Some nice bright spots that I want to talk about from the Boston Celtics bench, though, was, Peyton, was Sam Hauser, six for 11 from the field, five for nine from three with three total rebounds and 17 total points. He was one of the guys that was keeping the Boston Celtics in this game and having them some rhythm because the Boston Celtics would have completely gotten blown up by 20 or 30 if they did not have Sam Hauser's rhythm keeping them in this game. Namus Cato also had some impact minutes as well for the Boston Celtics before he tweaked his ankle and came in for the fourth quarter. He had seven points, seven total rebounds, and one assist. Peyton Pritchard also finished with plus 13 and 8 total points, 3 for 5 from the field, and was a solid shooter for the Boston Celtics. But the Celtics did wave the white flag right around the 3-minute mark, and that was kind of embarrassing for them. Want to look at the Lakers, talk and discuss about them. Austin Reeves, 32 points, was phenomenal for the Lakers, was not missing from 3. You can see he shot 70% 70, 70 from 3, 7, 4, 10, was making everything. And from the Lakers, they were just completely dominating from 3, shooting very, very great percentages. Hachimura had some good 3s. Vanderbilt hit some 3s before he got hurt as well. D'Lo also shot 50% from 3 as well. So the Lakers kind of had a little bit of a bounce back game where the Celtics had a very lackluster game. But I want to get 
into some more things talking about this game because it was kind of sad to see the turnovers and the turnover rate that happened with the Boston Celtics in this loss because early on in the first half it was clearly abundant with a bunch of turnovers that the Celtics were having and they need to clean that up and have that kind of fixed out because they can't be having that especially versus teams that are you know without LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Last season, the Celtics kind of played down to their opponents where they had a lot of games where they would play against, you know, the Washington Wizards or some bad opponents and they would be in close matchups or even possibly lose some of those games just because they were playing to their opponent's skill level. And the Boston Celtics hadn't really done that until this season that much until we got into tonight's matchup versus the Los Angeles Lakers where it seemed they just got completely outplayed and it was just not looking great. Especially not hitting that great from three-point range, the Boston Celtics being down 20 points, being down 15 points, were continuing to jack up those shots. And in the third quarter and the fourth quarter, Kristaps Porzingis was the guy that was excelling scoring in the paint. Jason Tatum was hitting some threes here and there, but he was driving to the rim and scoring a little bit inside as well. So with the Boston Celtics, you need to kind of prioritize scoring at the rim and doing that a little bit more when you are down. I don't think jacking up the threes and going with that strategy continuously is going to fly us back into games. Sometimes it will work, but if the threes still aren't falling late into the third quarter, fourth quarter, the Celtics should continue to prioritize attacking to the rim because we've seen in some matchups where it has bounced the Celtics back in a couple opportunities, but sometimes it hasn't. Even though the Celtics did have an upsetting loss, there are two some bright spots to talk about in this loss. Sam Hauser is looking like a solid wing for the Boston Celtics. We want to look back at these stats. We can see 5 for 11 from the field, like I mentioned, but 5 for 9 from the three-point range with 17 points. He's also been a solid defender for the Boston Celtics at the wing position, and he was a big guy in the Celtics game tonight. As, like I mentioned earlier, Sam Hauser was keeping the Celtics alive in this game. There were points where he was coming in, hitting multiple threes, and it was, you know, rejuvenating the crowd a little bit and stopping these big momentum swings from the Los Angeles Lakers as they were continuously hitting threes. Sam Hauser was the one key guy that could continuously hit threes for the Boston Celtics tonight. So having him go kind of back and forth with this Los Angeles Lakers team at some points in the game was a little bit disruptive, but unfortunately it could not get it fully done. And Namus Cato also looked like he could be a nice piece for this Boston Celtics team, looking more and more and resembling into a Robert Williams-esque type player. Honestly, if the Celtics do not look to convey anyone or go after anyone at this trade deadline, definitely bringing up Namus Cato as this third big would definitely be a solid option for the Boston Celtics. And even if he is the third big for this season, I do think by the end of this season and by the start of next season, he will have a much, much increased role with the Boston Celtics as he gets more and more familiar playing with this Celtics roster. But let me know what you guys' thoughts and opinions are on this unfortunate loss for the Boston Celtics as they take on the Los Angeles Lakers and suffer a brutal loss at home with no LeBron James and no Anthony Davis. The Celtics gear up as Marcus Smart comes into town on Sunday. Unfortunately, will not be playing for the Memphis Grizzlies, but he will be in the building. Expect a tribute video and expect the fans to go nuts for them. The Grizzlies recently just completed a trade as well, which is kind of shocking Steven, sending Steven Adams out for Victor Lodipo. And with their banged up roster, hopefully the Celtics can get a bounce back win versus them. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode of Celtics Digest. I'm Bruce Velez, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.